Our Torah reading this Shabbat, Matot Masse, translates as to the staff of the tribes journey. Indeed, our Torah reading tomorrow will lead us right up to the edge of the promised land as it will mark the end of the book of Numbers and enable Moses in the book of Deuteronomy starting next Shabbat to begin his series of final speeches, poems, and blessings to the people before they move forward without him toward the promised land. We are a people of journey. The word Ivri, Hebrew, has as its root avar or ver, one who passes over or the one from the other side. For the very beginning of the account of our ancestors is a call to travel. Lech lecha, God says to Abraham, go for your sake, ma'artzecha from your land, umuladecha from your birthplace, from the house of your parents, to the land that I will show you. And so begins the Jewish journey. Journey. And so tomorrow we will conclude a narrative of dramatic stories of the journey through the desert from Mount Sinai toward the Promised Land. This last week I had the privilege to help call together and facilitate a congregational conversation on the travel through COVID land. For it seems that we are all now travelers together in a new and uncertain place. If it was not a moment of COVID this week, Linda and I would have arrived in Norway out of curiosity to take a cruise in the north kind of a safari of um, polar bears and reindeer and melting ice in order to get a sense of a place we've never been to. But you don't have to travel far in order to see the familiar in unfamiliar ways. That's what I gain from travel is new experiences. So much is familiar people are people and yet, in encountering terrain that is fresh and people who may eat and dress and speak differently than I do, what I draw from it is a greater awareness of what I might otherwise take for granted. And so I wanted to share just briefly a few of my takeaways from listening to our congregants describe this journey of COVID land this unfamiliar turf of danger and sequestration. One insight that was shared was that we've grown to understand that our homes are not only a house, our homes are a sanctuary, a place where we feel safe, where we have quality of protection and feeling at ease with that which is familiar around us. And so many have given more attention to their homes, knowing again that a home is more than a place we live. It's a place that expresses who we are and more, a place we feel fully ourselves, safe and at home. The second observation is more than ever, COVID land has taught us how interdependent we are. Literally, in this journey, our safety is dependent on the responsibility of our neighbors. Whether they wear or mask or not, for instance, can determine the spread of this unforeseen foe. When we do as is necessary, sometimes go shopping, we can't help but feel tense, even endangered. And again, on the positive side, we're reminded how interdependent we are and that our own safety depends on the responsibility and the caregiving 
of our neighbors and likewise our responsibility to do what's right to protect others. Others have shared how this new moment is one of finding new strengths. The strengths that come with learning to be more technologically sophisticated and able to both use Zoom and to look around the web to discover new things. And so people share that they've used the Zoom not unlike this moment in which we are connecting with each other via camera and screen to have the convenience of attending services more often, both at CBI and around the country and even around the world, to take classes and to learn, to meet with scholars and artists. It's an opportunity to open horizons from our sanctuary, from our homes. And so we talked about when I travel, I often collect one souvenir. Often it's not particularly expensive. Sometimes it is. But it's always the same. What is valuable to me in my home are the reminders of who I was with or where I have been more than something intrinsically market share valuable. And so I asked, what is the souvenir that you anticipate you will take from COVID land to remind you of the lessons of gratitude for family, the gratitude for the simple pleasure of interacting with friends in person and giving a handshake or even a hug at the end. What are the simple reminders that you might take from COVID land to remind you that what is otherwise normal can change in a moment? And so the more common response was that people will take a good-looking mask, and we were, many of us, collecting masks at this point, as a reminder. And here's my caution. I am not Pollyannish in that. What we so deeply appreciate now that we had PC before COVID, by human nature, will dissipate. We will forget. We're wired that when we eat a good meal to appreciate it, but when we eat a bad meal, and on the extreme, if we develop food poisoning, we can't even look at that food again for a very long time. That's how we're wired for survival and for response to reality. And so my prayer is that we will find ways to harvest the good on this journey of COVID land and hold on to that experience for good and for bad of this moment, but particularly hold on to be our best beyond COVID land for this will pass. We will pass through this. And when we do, may we find greater joy in the world, in the simple pleasures that would otherwise be taken for granted. Ribbon Shalom, Master of the Universe, together each of us is traveling in a land that is familiar and simultaneously topsy-turvy. We know that this land in which we travel has dangers and we pray for family members and friends of family who have been struck by COVID. May we be safe. May we journey forward. May we do so with the hope and recognition that this too shall pass. But when it does, may we hold on to the lessons learned now that what we took for granted was so sweet. May it taste even more sweet in the years ahead. Amen. Amen.